Welcome to this brief introduction to Chai Pi Core. In this video, we'll be looking at some of the key concepts within Chai Pi Core. Data nodes, tasks, pipelines, scenarios. When we look at the code itself, we see that each of these entities is associated with a config. Data node can represent any type of data, text, number, object, JSON, database tables, etc. It can be input data, output data, or intermediary data used by the application. It can be any type of storage format, CSV, JSON, Pickle, in-memory, or custom formats. Each data node may be associated with a specific scope relative to the application. The scope could be global, scenario, pipeline, or cycle. Caching is available for enhanced performance. Data nodes only need to be recalculated at certain times when there are changes that need to be taken into consideration. A task takes one or more data nodes as inputs, produces one or more data nodes as outputs. It does that through a standard Python function. This can be ETL, filtering, merging, training an ML model, evaluating or predicting, solving decision optimization model, or really any other type of data processing task. A pipeline manages multiple tasks. It's built as a directed acyclic computation graph, a DAG. It organizes components of complex algorithms. It controls the flow of execution. It supports parallel processing where this is appropriate. A scenario can be thought of as a single instance of a business problem. It may have distinct data or distinct parameters. It will include one or more pipelines. It may be connected to a repeated cycle. In many business processes, applications are executed on a regular basis, perhaps monthly, quarterly, or annual. We're going to take a look at a simple use case. Our data is a data set with uh, information on more than 50,000 diamonds. For each of these diamonds, we have eight features, some categorical, some continuous. Our target is the price of the diamond. We build a pipeline that prepares the data for two different regression models, and we generate predictions. We create scenarios by allowing the user through the graphical user interface to select features to exclude, to compare the performance of these algorithms based on the selected and included features. Here's a high level overview of the pipeline that's being used in this application. Input data coming in through a CSV file on the far left, results which are going to be displayed in the GUI on the far right. In between, we have some processing steps as well as two regression algorithms, which will be uh, executed in parallel. Let's now take a look at the input data itself. This screen is built using TyPy GUI, using our table control to show the first page of over 53,000 rows of data about diamonds. We'll come back to this in a moment after taking a look at the code behind the application. On the left-hand side here, we see the initial data config, which points to a CSV file, which contains the data on the 50,000 diamonds. Below, we see a number of other data node configs, which represent intermediary data, and ultimately output data. Many of these are scoped as scenario, as they are specific to the execution of uh, an individual scenario. Some are scoped as global, as they're common to all scenarios. Below the data node configs, we will see the task configs. We'll see, for instance, this one called adjust data task config. It refers to the Python function create categories, which we can see here 
on the right. So each of these task configs takes one or more data node configs as input, in this case one, and produces one or more data nodes as outputs. If we look at the drop calls task config, we see that in this case, there's a list of two input data node configs and a single output data node config. As we scroll to the bottom, we see our pipeline config, which is very simple. In general, it is simply a list of the component tasks. The order of these tasks is irrelevant as TyPy is smart enough to understand how these need to be strung together based on the input and output data nodes. And at the very bottom, we see our scenario config, which points to the pipeline. In this case, we see a list of only one pipeline. Let's take a look now and actually run the application. I'm going to create two somewhat arbitrary scenarios. In the first one, I will exclude these two characteristics, these two features, and I'll create a second scenario eliminating X, Y, and Z. I'm going to start these going and then go back to the log in the code. We'll notice that scenario run one is running and we see a list of the tasks being completed. As we're running scenario two, we'll notice that the adjust data task is marked as being skipped. As indicated before, this data does not need to be recalculated. Therefore, TyPy will skip the reprocessing, which can be very efficient in highly complex applications. We see here that our output task has been completed. Now we can go back to the application screen and take a look at results. Here's scenario one, and we can switch to scenario two. If we look carefully, we will see that in each case, the random forest model performs better than the XGB, extreme gradient boosting model. Uh, however, the differences between scenario one and scenario two on each of these two models is not very different. So thank you very much for your time and attention. Please go to our website, typi.io, for more information.